Okay, chemists, welcome back. We are going to look at functional groups today. Uh, this is really going to be your functional group dictionary moving forward in the course. Now, there's a lot on this lesson, but let me stress, there's only a handful that I really want you to be able to memorize, and I've just highlighted them there. They're the first column and about half of the second column that you see in front of you. Uh, so let's go through those right now and label which ones down below match those functional groups. And then just so you have something kind of uh, comprehensive, we'll, we'll fill in the rest as well. And I'll try to show you just a couple of memory learning tricks to remember a few of them, but most of them is just uh, unfortunately memorization of what these clusters look like. So uh, an alkane, the first one on the list, that's just hydrocarbon with all single bonds. Uh, number 16 here is an example of nothing but an alkane. Right below it, we're looking for an alkene. Uh, that's a carbon-carbon double bond. Now there's others on this sheet, but number seven is only an alkene. Uh, I know I see things that look like alkenes, like right next to it in number six, but that's actually got more to it. So it's called something more than just an alkene. Uh, we'll get to that. The alkyne is the carbon-carbon triple bond. Uh, number 26 is the alkyne. Hopefully you're looking at this and trying to find them live. It's sort of a scavenger hunt as you go through it. Uh, the alcohol, that's an OH attached to a carbon and nothing else interesting. I find it in number 19. And let's see, an aldehyde is a carbon-oxygen double bond with an H on one side and a carbon on the other. That looks to be... It's even a scavenger hunt for me, if you can tell, since I'm doing it live. There we go, number 15 is the aldehyde. Note I just mentioned something, the carbon-oxygen double bond specifically is called a carbonyl. You could actually have that to your list as well. That's specifically just that functionality, and it's present in a lot of the functional groups. Uh, so we have names for everything. Um, there's a handful of others that you probably learned in your former chemistry class, frankly. So I would say, why don't you hit pause now and see if you could just do the rest of those highlighted ones right there, the carboxylic acid, ester, amidamine, acid chloride, nitrile, ether, and ketone, and then unpause it and come back and let's see how you did. We'll race through those. Okay, so next is the carboxylic acid, that's 22. And at this point, I'll teach you a couple of tricks of some of the others. There is on this page the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid. That's called the carboxylate which is way up there in number two. So you can see the similarity. That's not one of the highlighted ones, so it's not one you have to know yet, but you will learn it. You'll accidentally memorize a lot of these as we learn the chemistry that they sort of do. Uh, next up on the list going down is the ester. An ester is what you get when you take an alcohol and a carboxylic acid and combine the two and lose a water molecule. And there's an example of a carboxylic uh, of an ester down in the lower left, right on top of my head, I imagine, when this video is done. Uh, moving down the list, we get to an amide. Amide is number one. That is a nitrogen group directly attached to a carbonyl. That's a little more complicated than a regular, what's called amine, if you know what I mean. That is just a nitrogen with single bonds and nothing else interesting near it. Uh, so number 30 would be an example of an amine. And now we're into that second column, the acid chloride. That should be the easiest one to figure out. If you don't know, there's only one on this piece of paper that has a chlorine in it, and it is the acid chloride. I just have to find it uh, among the ones we haven't done yet. That would be number 12. It's called an acid chloride. Then the nitrile. I'll try to remember this one. That's a carbon-nitrogen triple bond. There it is in number 27 which brings us to the ether, and ether is a carbon-oxygen carbon bond in sequence, again, with nothing else interesting around it. And ether sort of looks like an ester, but without the carbonyl. That's exactly how you could describe an ether. Uh, an ester is a little more complicated, so we give it a more specific name. Then we get to the ketone, the last on our required list. The ketone is a carbonyl flanked by carbons. Number 24 is a ketone. So the rest, I'll argue for now, are optional, but I'm gonna go through them anyway. 
uh, and point out a couple of others that I think will be useful as we go forward in the class. And this way you have something comprehensive, but I'm just gonna go through the list and show you what we have. Number three, maybe some of you uh, during your, your pause session found number three to also be an ester, and you're not wrong. This is an ester, but we have a specific name for it when it's a cyclic ester. We call it a lactone. It does not have to be a five-membered ring. Any uh, cyclic ester counts as a lactone. Number five looks like the combination of, uh, sorry, number four, looks like the combination of an alcohol and an alkene. So they hybridize those and you get what's called an enol. Number six uh, is the conjugate base of an enolate, uh, sorry, of an enol, and it's called an enolate conjugate base of the one we just did. Remember what conjugate base means. That means uh, it, what's, it, it's what it looks like without the H. So if you take an enol and you lose that H with an anion left behind, you get the conjugate base of an enol 8. Uh, eight, is, uh, 8 is a pretty obscure one. This is a positively charged imine, which is what's called a carbon nitrogen double bond. So that's an iminium you'll find that a functional group that just has a positive charge embedded in it is often the same name as the functional group with an extra eum at the end. Uh, number nine is the combination of an amine and an alkene. And we hybridize those and we get what's called an enamine. The name always means something, enamine. 10 is a sulfur with an oxygen, AKA a sulfoxide the name, sulfox. Uh, 11 looks very similar to number one, and it is. It is also an amide, but it's cyclic. I'm not going to go into the etymology of this, but a cyclic amide is called a lactam. This is a five-membered lactam, but just like the lactone, it doesn't have to be limited to that ring size. That's it for that row. Then we get to 13 and 14. 13, the nitrogen with two oxygens attached to it, that's called a nitro group. Uh, two nitrogens doubly bonded to each other is called a diazo, sometimes a diazine. We'll hear both of those. That's it for that row. And then number 17, uh, an oxygen-oxygen single bond, a notoriously easy bond to break in chemical reactions. This is called a peroxide. You might be familiar with hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, the most common peroxide out there, but there are others as long as they have that functionality. It's just those two atoms. 18 looks sort of like a double ether. We have a carbon, oxygen, carbon, and another carbon, oxygen, carbon in the same molecule, and they share a carbon. Uh, this is called a ketal, sometimes an acetal. We'll learn more about the distinction between those two when we get to that chemistry in Orgo 2. Uh, this one happens to be specifically a ketal, though, because it came from a ketone. And then 20 uh, is in a zid group. It's three nitrogens in a row. That's one residence contributor of it. 21, we saw the aminium a few rows ago. This is just an imine. That means a carbon-nitrogen double bond, analogous to a carbonyl, but with nitrogen in its place. Uh, 13 is the conjugate base, sorry, 23, is the conjugate base of an alcohol, uh, and that's called an alkoxide. That wraps up that row. Uh, 25 is the sulfur version of an ether. It's called a sulfide. Then we get to 28. 28 is another combo. We have an alkene and a ketone. We learn how to make these with aldol condensations in Orgo 2. This is called an enone. Alkene hybridized with ketone, so enone. Uh, 29 is a positively charged oxygen. That's just called an oxonium. And that's one type of oxonium, but it's really just almost any positively charged ox uh, oxygen-containing compound. Uh, then we get to a positively charged nitrogen. This is called an ammonium, number 31. You might remember the ammonium ion, the polyatomic ion, which is NH4+. Plus thinking that, and you wouldn't be wrong, that is ammonium, the polyatomic ion. 
but a general term, N-ammonium ion, is any positively charged nitrogen group. 32 is a sulfur version of an alcohol. It's called a thiol. And then we get to our last row. 34 looks like two esters back-to-back -back flanking one uh, oxygen, and that's analogous to two carboxylic acids coming together and losing a water molecule. This is called an anhydride. And the reason for that is because you take what we just said, two carboxylic acids, and you lose water. So anhydrous, anhydride, you lose the water molecule. That's what gets that name. 35 uh, rem is a little reminiscent, my students think, of an old telephone, uh, the mouthpiece and the earpiece of a, a receiver. Uh, so it looks kind of like a cell phone, sort of, and in fact, it's a cell phone, as in you used to call me on mine. And lastly, 36 is a nitrogen oxygen double bond that's called a nitroso. Okay, so there's a very comprehensive list of all the functional groups. Many we will learn the chemistry of in this semester and several next semester, and some we'll just see quite sporadically, but hold on to that dictionary. I think it'll be very useful for you moving forward.